Hi everyone, it's Marietta, founder of Immigration Biz and business immigration attorney. Welcome to today's video. I want to talk about very briefly about E2 visa extension checklist and what you need to know if you want to actually renew your E2 visa, if you need to renew your visa and what are my tips that you should consider when you are about to renew your E2 investor visa. So first things first, there are basically two ways how you can renew E2 visa. One way is actually renewing your status, right? There is a difference between E2 visa and actual E2 visa status. E2 visa status is granted the moment you enter the United States and it's usually for two years. E2 visa is only issued by the US consulate or embassy in your country. So if you are actually applying for change of status in the United States, you are receiving E2 visa status. You're not receiving E2 visa itself. And typically, I actually recommend for people to apply via U.S. Embassy or Consulate in your home country for two reasons. Number one is that it's faster, typically. I'm not necessarily stating that it's faster now. For some embassies, it can be super fast. Uh, we had a gentleman from Czech Republic who applied and in like a week or so, he got immediately scheduled appointment. This, was, this, was, this just happened right now which is May 2022. But then on the other hand, you know, we have clients who are waiting for their appointment, for example, in Canada, and the wait time is about nine months. So it really depends on your home country and the US embassy in your home country and the local conditions, right? But under normal circumstances, you know, the, it, it wouldn't take longer than a month or six weeks. Uh, that's that. If you are actually applying for change of status in the United States, uh, if you don't uh, purchase uh, the, the premium processing, the typical processing can be up to nine months these days. And uh, again, this is experience from recent experience with a client who she got approved in the United States. However, even though you get approved in the United States, that is not going to guarantee that you actually going to uh, receive a visa, E2 visa, at the US consulate if you ever leave United States and fly to your home country. For example, you get the approval of your status in the US, right? You got the E2 visa status approval. But what if you need to leave? Maybe you need to fly to your home country next year. The moment you leave, you cannot come back because you don't have a visa. You don't have that stamp in your passport. So for that, you would need to go to the U.S. consulate and apply again. So you would have to actually put together the application again. You would have to pay the fee and you would have to go through the process and interview again. And therefore, because there is no 100% guarantee that even if you get that extension in the United States or approval of your legal status, you will receive the visa. Um, therefore, I highly recommend that instead of actually changing the status, you do it through U.S. consulate if you can. If you check the U.S. consulate in your home country right now and the wait time is crazy, for example, 12 months, and you are currently present in the United States, then by all means, do it in the United States if you need to change the status, right? But if you have that, uh, that option to apply at the U.S. consulate and the wait time is not that crazy, I would go always through U.S. consulate. So there are basically two ways, right? You can extend your legal status. United States. If you have right now E2 visa, you are extending United States. It's a similar process actually that you've done before if you were changing the status, right? This time it's not changing but extending, right? Um, the documentation is very similar but again like I don't recommend it unless you have a choice. Therefore, I recommend choosing US Embassy Consulate if you want to extend it, especially if you are right now outside of United States and the wait time is not that bad. So what is the actual checklist? Um, well, I'm going to talk about the checklist in a second, but before I dive there, I want to actually mention that when you are applying for your E2 visa through US consulate, typically the, the period you are granted your E2 visa is anywhere from two years to five years, okay? So imagine, for example, you get five year visa, you're good to go every time you're entering the US, you would have your status up to two years from each entry point. So 
The visa period is up to five years. However, the actual status, the moment you're entering the country, the period would be up to two years. Now, it's also a little bit more affordable to apply through US consulate than through USCIS. The wait time in your US depends. Again, it's approximately six to nine months if it's just a regular processing, unless you do the premium. Um, and um, again, this is all relative when I say it's more affordable and faster because for some countries it could be longer via US consulate, but there are many countries that still uh, are okay sort of and they do it relatively fast. And, you know, when we look, we look we're looking at next year and so these embassies will more and more speed up the process, hopefully, and, and things will go back to normal. Okay, so that's that. Now let's, let's talk about the actual checklist that you need to have when you are renewing your E2 visa via US consulate or via US embassy. So DS-160, that you already know that. Uh, this is the typical application you do whenever you're applying for non-immigrant visa. You do it online. Then there is a DS-156E. This is a specifically for investors only. You do not fill out this form for your dependents. This is only for yourself as an investor. For a passport style, uh, make sure to have a 600 times 600 pixel wide background. And uh, I think it should not exceed 240 ki ki kilobytes because Otherwise, you have difficulty to upload it, especially when you're submitting DS 160 and you won't be able to submit it without photo. Make sure the photo is not old, so it shouldn't be older than six months. Next one is affidavit confirmation of intent to leave the US. You need to have intention to leave the US even though you are in the US under E2 visa, right? Which is the paradox because on one hand, you are running business, making money in the US, but still, your intention should be to leave the country and come back home when you're done with this particular business. For that, you need to write affirmation, affidavit. If you need help, I do have actual uh, program right now on sale uh, that you can find link below this video. In that program, I am actually teaching you exact, exactly what you need to have, how to prepare this affidavit, this confirmation and so on. So 100% check it out if you want to save money. It's heavily discounted right now. So affidavit confirmation. Sometimes people ask me, do I also need to show ties to my home country? Yes, you do. You need to show ties to your home country. So for example, if you own uh, any uh, property in your home country, this would be great example of showing ties. Again, this is another paradox, right? Uh, because some people, they sold everything and they don't necessarily have any ties, right? So I'm not saying that if you're not able to establish these ties, you will not be approved. However, it's helpful to show ties. If you don't have any ties, then at least have affidavit confirmation ready and signed when you are putting together this package. Next one is short updated business plan. Guys, they don't need to see the long business plan anymore. Remember, you submitted your e visa application before. Chances are they do still have that information on file. This is already existing business, up and running business. So make sure to uh, create updated business plan. I would say maximum five pages long. The reason is many embassies went online. They are now doing online filings. They are not receiving the typical print package um, style of applications they used to. So make sure that this is short, precise business plan that has the future projections that are updated. Okay. And make sure you understand the business plan, especially when you, if you go for that interview, because you need to actually justify it and understand where is this business going. So especially for those who are maybe hiring other people to do business plan for them. Again, if you join my program, link below this video, I do have business plan sample there, which is very simple. You don't have to go crazy. This is not like a crazy EB-5 business plan where you need to hire professionals to create business plan for you. This is actually something you can create on your own if you have proper guidance and you understand as a business owner and entrepreneur what needs to be in the business plan. And to be perfectly honest, as an entrepreneur, 
as a business owner, it's your responsibility to understand the numbers and the projections. Where is your business going? Next one is prove that your business is operational. So how do we prove that the business is operational? Well, there are different ways how we can prove it, right? You have existing website, you have existing sales funnels, you have sales brochures, marketing materials, you're doing marketing activities, you have marketing budget, you have people who are working for you, you have existing clients, you have engagement letters, you have contracts and so on. These are examples that your business is real and operational, okay? So it's not like you just started a business two years ago and no longer it's active, right? You need to show it's still operational. Of course, we are able to show it by uh, using US tax returns as an evidence. Uh, so I always recommend to use the last three years of tax returns if applicable. Now, if you're not paying taxes, this could be actually deal breaker for you, especially for people who run multinational companies. And uh, with E2 visa, you should be paying taxes in the United States, specifically uh, that is connected with this company that you have started. Uh, if you need help, obviously contact CPA uh, because this is definitely tax question for tax professional. Next one you should include is PL and balance sheet. So PL and balance sheet should be part of your accounting, right? And this should be included from the recent two years or three years. If you have space, if you can put three years, if not last two years, uh, this should be fine. W2 forms and payroll for employees. So we are assuming you do have employees, you do have a team of people working for you if you're contractors. 1099 is okay. Uh, I'm not saying that full-time employees is the must or deal breaker for you. It's okay if you don't have any full-time employees. If you're working with contractors, subcontractors, this is also okay. It's fine. Uh, but make sure to include evidence. If there is any chance of ownership in your business, make sure to share fully updated corporate documentation. So for example, if you uh, decided to sell part of your company or ownership or you have a business partners that you didn't have at the beginning, make sure to uh, share updated corporate documentation such as certificate of incorporation, operating agreement, meeting of minutes, etc. And of course, recent bank account statement. If you don't have space, uh, I would uh, definitely include at least the last month bank account statement. And uh, when you go for the actual interview, if you go for the interview, uh, you could then print everything, okay? Bring everything with you and make sure to actually read the documentation day before so you understand what is actually in my package. If they have any questions, most likely they will ask you questions about future projections. How much uh, taxes are you paying? What was, what was the recent tax year about, like? And, and this is pretty much it. They will also ask you why you don't have employees if you don't have employees or if you want to hire people, what is the plan and so on. And they ask you general questions about business. How is the business going? Okay. So basically this is it guys. This is for you if you are applying through US consulate. If you want more help with your E2 visa, 100% check out my program. Link is going to be below this video. Other than that, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for upcoming videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye.